preaching the word of God. God's word will not come back over. So this morning I want to say first and foremost, happy Mother's Day to all you beautiful mothers out there. And today God is in my spirit to speak about a mother's God. A mother's God. And before I go before you, I'm gonna I would like to pray. <coughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus. I come to you in your presence right now. Yes. Giving you glory, honor, and praise. Yes, because it's rightfully yours. Yes. I come to thank you for this opportunity, Father. Yes. To teach your people, Father. Yes. Your ways. That as they grasp to this word, Father, that it will fall on good ground. That as they raise their children, Father, in the admiration of the Lord, that they will grow up to be men and women of God. Help them to understand the, uh, the fullness, Father. That as we plant a seed in the ground, we expect a plant. Therefore, as we plant the word, your word in your children, that they will grow up to love you, to obey you, to reverence you for who you are, and to glorify your name. I thank you this morning, Father, and I'm asking, Lord, that as I hide behind the cross, the Holy Spirit will speak. Speak your word. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise that all belongs to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. A mother's guidance. My introduction is, mothers are given by nature throughout life. They offer sons and daughters all kinds of blessings. But the most important thing a godly mother can give her children is the motivation yes. to believe in God yes. and to know Him intimately. Yes. You know, we take our time to go in our secret closets. We talk to God. We go in our rooms, get quiet before God. But we often leave our children out. We are command by God to teach our children so that when they get older it's not something that you know they're very familiar with it's not something they're not familiar with the word of God in the book of Deuteronomy 6 and 4 it commands us to teach our children the love of God Amen. to teach our children how to love God and his love towards them in those two ways. For he loved us so much, God loved us so much, he gave his only begotten son to redeem us back to him. That's love. How many of you will lay your life down for your child? My God. How many of you? You may say, oh yeah, I will, I will. Then they say, okay, let's stand here in front of this uh, fire and oven. Because you love God so much, you just God all God all over you. And we're gonna we're gonna let your child live if we can kill you. How many gonna stand up there? My God, my God. But God loves us so much yes. in the midst of our sin, in our mess, yes. that He gave His Son, yes, sir. His only begotten Son. My, my. The Word of God in the book of Deuteronomy says. Reads. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And then he goes on and said, These commandments that I give to you today are to be upon your heart. Impress. Impress. Not just sit around and talk and lollygag about it. Impress them upon your children's yes. heart. Yes. Teach them. Yes. Yes. They never learn on their own. You teach them how to be potty trained. You teach them how to get 
get off a bottle, you teach them everyday life skills. But the most important thing is to teach them about Jesus. Through his son. A lot of times we don't take that to heart because we feel they're watching us. But what are we teaching them? What are we teaching them? You know, I, I go in this commissary sometime and I look at these little kids and they just, oh God, they just, they say things to their parents. I don't even think about it. To say it, I don't even let it cross my mind. My mom, I think my mom had when it was When I want to say something, I had no business saying it, she already knew. I never dare you to say it. I'm looking at her like, <coughs> maybe my eyes told her, because I do have a way with the eyes. But she knew. I wish you would. I just wish you would. And don't even say it under my breath. I didn't think she could hear it. I said it so low. She said, what you say? What did you say? I know you didn't say nothing. So okay, Mom. All right, I'm sorry. Mom has a way of knowing. Mom, they know. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when they sit at home and when they walk along the way, when they lie down and when they get up. And that's just not just for moms. Grandmas. Grandmas. Yeah, I talk mine. I'm done. It doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. And it don't even have to be your child. God will lay it on your heart to teach someone else. Right. You know, when I had Saya at the time, my daughter was at school. Bless his heart. He would always say, Grandma, you going upstairs with me? Yes, baby. Okay, what are we going to talk about tonight, Grandma? Are we going to talk about Jonah and the whale? I said, No, not tonight. God's leading me another way. So then, for the first couple of months, I taught him. Then I said, it's your turn to teach Grandma. Uh -oh, come on now. Tell me what you learned from those nights that Grandma taught you. You know, we underestimate children. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I saw that when I was in Hawaii, teaching two and three, four-year-olds. Do you know those kids can tell me exactly what I taught them the next right. Sunday? That's right. I, got I mean, right. it's just the hottest word. Someone called Sister Hollywood. They don't understand. Uh -huh. Sister Hollywood. That's not the what the Bible says. I said, what did it say then? Believe it or not, they got it. They go home and they tell their parents what they were told. When they catch the parents doing something, because I said, you know, the Bible says, thou shalt not lie. And I said, but you can't lie because God knows you're lying. And one of them corrected me. I said, next Sunday, I'm bringing snacks. I didn't bring snacks. Uh -oh. Sister Holly's word? You lied, Sister Holly's word. I am so sorry. You are so right. Because I knew I was supposed to bring it. Yeah. And I left it at home on the table. Uh but then they start correcting their sentence. Parents don't like to be correct. Uh we know that. Yes. <laughs> we just know it all. So I said, well, what did you say to your mommy? She told a lie, Sister Hollingsworth. I said, you can't tell mommy she told a lie. You can't do that to mommy. Mommy, that's not true. But you said, Sister Hollingsworth, I don't like liars. Well, that's what the word said. All lies were burning in the lake of fire. Don't hold it to me. Hold it to the word. So that's what the word said. But God requires us to teach our children because you know they're going to grow up to be the adults that we want God to be proud of. Praise God. Teach them God's ways to our children. God's ways. Conflict. Conflict affects, affected the first Christians. We're going to go with number one, principle. Teach your children biblical principles to survive this secular society yes, Lord. in which we live. Amen. 
Our children are going through so much Amen. right now. Amen. You know, when I went to school, yeah, they bullied us and all that other stuff. But Lord knows they don't bully us like they do today. Amen. They can bully you at school and it stop right there. Right. But now it's on it. Facebook is on the internet is on I mean, it's everywhere. Amen. So they got to constantly, they need to, as young people, children, to be built up in the way to the Lord. <coughs> to obey God and to leave all the consequences to him. Teach them the truth and they will be able to recognize a lie. Now if you lie to your kids all the time, how are they going to know the truth? <laughs> Honestly. You know, we, gotta, we, we have to be accountable for what we do. You can't blame it on the teacher. The teacher ain't their mother. Right. It's you know what? It starts in the home. God requires us. And yeah, I'm talking to mothers, but fathers, you are at, you are just as much at fault. Teach your children. You want to teach them everything else. You want to teach them. We leave that alone. Okay. Okay. Come on, make a plan. All right. Teach them the truth and they will be able to recognize a lie. Because you know Satan is a father of lies. Yes, he is. And just because you think he lies to you, he lies to them too. Yeah. Satan is not a dislike, God's not a respectful person, neither is Satan. Amen. He would tell little Johnny some stuff you just don't know. But you gotta teach little Johnny to hear God's yes, voice. Yes. You know, we want to be taught, we want to grow mature, we want to be the women and men and women of God that God wants us to be. But we got to start with the infants so they can grow up to be men and women of God. Amen. You know, we teach them morals, but let's teach them godliness. Yeah. Godliness. Yeah. You know, in society today, godliness is put on the back burner. Yeah, it is. We want to know what, but hey, I dare teach, I dare teach little Susie. Because Lil Susie may come up and I'm doing something I have no business doing. Lil Susie just tell me straight up, you know you're wrong. Yeah. And we call that being disrespectful. Come on, come on. Yeah. My God. No. Out of the mouth of babe, God will speak. My God. He will. Yeah, you sure will. Patterns. Children must be able to see you live by faith as a Christian. Or they will think you are a hypocrite. How do you know that's just a hard word? The kids used to say to me, especially Kel. Kel was, oh Lord, I was my tough one. Because Kel would speak her mind. <laughs> she would speak her mind. She would be like, Mom, Mom, you know you were not telling the truth, Mom. Now you know, Mom, especially when my husband was in the desert. They wanted me to do everything. Go to work, come home, take them there, take them here, take them there. Just kill me. And she would say, Mom, did you not say on Monday that when you got off work on Friday <laughs> that we were going to Chuck E. Cheese? Why are we still sitting in this house? Wow. <laughs> How you gotta go somewhere and sit down? Leave me alone. <laughs> but conviction failed. Wow. Okay, get your stuff. We're going to Chuck E. Cheese. Hey, oh, we'll be so tired. Yeah. I mean, I'll be like, oh, Lord, here we go to Chuck E. Cheese. Now, listen, I'm going to sit the roof. You and Ricky go play everything y'all want to play. Mom will sit right in this chair. <laughs> and matter of fact, I'm going to eat on y'all pizza while y'all play. <laughs> That's fine, Mom. Are you giving us some money? I'm going to give you a few change. When we run out of money, we go going home. <laughs> it's over. But see, you got to be a man or woman of your word. Because kids will hold your feet to the fire. They will. And they will tell you exactly where you are. So don't go and slap little Johnny because you said go somewhere and sit down. No, 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 no. We ought to teach them how to be the vessels that God desired them to be. Children often follow, often follow their parents' footsteps, such as Eve and Cain, Abraham and Sarah. When Abraham went into this place, 
for Sarah. He said that's his sister because he was afraid. We have, you know, we look at that and says, oh, that's okay. No. The Bible says, thou shalt not lie. Not, it's not upon a person. So what did, what, did, what did Jacob do? He said the same thing about Rebecca. We have to teach them godly ways. Not things that we were taught as children that don't line up according to the word of God. We have to teach them how to live godly. That's what makes them responsible. Because they know, even if mom and dad is not there, I can depend on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Persistence. Even if your child don't get it the first time, keep teaching it. You don't know. You may look at that child and say, Lord, he's dumb as a rock. <laughs> is he ever going to You don't know what God is doing in that child. It may not show up right there, but at that point in time, uh -huh. yeah. bam, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. mama say, <laughs> or daddy say, and that's what God said. Yeah. But see, we have to give them, respect them enough to at least teach them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in the old days, my mom used to say to my mother, what do you mean? No Nothing. Think about simple. Is he that girl? <laughs> But you know my brother know that Bible back and forth? Yes, sir. He studied to prove my mind. He wasn't supposed to be yet, but I believe in God is going to get there. Amen. Because God's word does not cut back. Amen. Keep teaching them. Discipline, discipline them. Discipline. Discipline. Amen. Your children are not your friends. Your children are not your friends. Oh, 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 because I didn't play with this, and I'm not playing my grand. I'm not. And my neighbor, bless her heart, she was cutting me. I gave it two times. Let her turn out. Okay? Here she come again. And Rick was saying, You better stop. That's not nice. Don't do that. I'm breathing. My breathing becomes heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. So, Ricky's looking at me because we work hard on those. It's a mother. Uh -oh. I said, Lady, come here. She comes and stands in front of me, her eyes get full. I said, Did I not tell you not to do that? And then she's going to get smart. I said, come walk with her. <laughs> so the door is not open. I said, the door. I said, when well, grandma tells you not to do that, that's what I mean. I said, if you do it again, I'm going to take my shoe off and you're going to find out really how that is. That's right. That's right. 
Truth and obedience. Truth and obedience. You know, I had a thing in my house when my kids was young. They just couldn't walk in and get a cookie out the cookie jar. My thing is, you ask. You can't do nothing up in this house. So you think you're going to go in there and get what you want? I need to ask. And I didn't do that to be harsh. I did that to teach them not to steal. Because you know what? If they're going to my house and going to pick a job, get something, that's your house and you say that. They can do it at your house. Because they feel the freedom. Come on, right in there and get that. Woo! Go back there. We understand. You have got to train them. That's right. It is your responsibility to teach them. That's right. They're not going to teach themselves. Amen. Even though we do have children out there that's doing that. Because the parents are slacking in their responsibility. Yes. Participation. Get involved in your kids' daily lives. Amen. By doing the things that you want them to do and the things they're doing. We too many of us putting our kids before computers. Lord have mercy the things that they learn on computer. About five years ago, I went home. I was with my oldest son. His daughter was telling me some stuff. I was fading in vain. I'm like, where do you get this stuff from? The computer. That's my bed. Sleep. My mom was looking at me like, oh Lord, I know she's going to say something. I said, you know what, Kayla? Everything you see on the internet is not for you. Everything that comes across that internet is not for you. And I feel that you should be watching it. And my daddy gave it to me. Okay. <laughs> So when I got home, I told mom, I said, you know, she said, I got this. I got this. So, but you know what? I began to pray and to see for my grandmother. Do you know today she's the speaker of the world? Amen. 16 years old. God is changing her life. You know, don't prejudge children. Right. Amen. You know, I don't hold it to her that she didn't understand, but I pray, God, please put somebody in her hand that knows you. My son is not there. His mother, his, her mother's not there. But Lord, you said my whole household is going to be saved. Yes. And I'm holding you to it, Father. Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. And when she, I wanted to be there so bad when she gave her first sermon, but I couldn't make it. My mom, she recorded it for me. Mom. How precious. Which goes to say, just because you see a child with a certain habit or pattern, it can be changed. Yeah. All you got to do is trust God. Yeah? And if the person you don't think should be doing it, ask God to intercede. Yes, God. He sent someone in her pattern. And a lot of times there were people in school that was talking with her about the Lord. Praise. Encouragement is more effective than condemnation. A lot of times we like to talk down to our children. Encourage your children. Let them know they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. You do this, that's what you want, right? That's what you stand on. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Teach your children the same way. God is not a respected person. Let them know they can do anything as long as it's in the will of God. They can excel. Don't pull them down. Therefore, teach them that they are given the tongue of the learner. And I always told that to my son, because he always said, Mom, how come I can't get this? I said, you don't do anything. Anything. I said, God has given you the tongue of the learner. You can go in there and learn just like the rest of them. Amen. 
Amen. And before I would depart from them, I would pray for my children. Amen. Every single day. Amen. And I would expect God to fulfill his word. Really went from an F student to an A student. Amen. God had to put a, a girl in his in his face that was just as free. My God. Marjorie was an A student. Amen. And she told Carla, you can do this. And I got that boy's report card. I was like, how do you? <laughs>
who fears the Lord, and who will pass on the will and inheritance of the Lord. Again, happy Mother's Day, and pray my strength in the Lord. Hey, Ben, can we give us a big hand for him? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. commandments, commandments. And, statutes. and statutes. I just personally believe as a church, we don't have a problem teaching our children commandments. We will teach them the statutes. But the one thing we forget to teach them is judgment. We don't teach them that God that does a judgment that comes with everything that you and I do. Every decision that we make, there's, going to, there's, a, there's collateral damage that's going to happen if we don't make the right decision. That's why you find so many people that say, I know the word, I know God. And they'll give you the glad text, all the good scriptures. Uh, yes, sir. God will never leave me or forsake me. Yes, sir. I can speak and touch things into existence. But what happened to be ye holy if I am holy? God, because he's holy, he has judgment. We just can't live any kind of way. I know it's nice to think that. It's freeing, it's liberating. But we've got to teach our children judgment. We've got to live a life where we know that everything God is, everything that we're doing, God is going to open that book of life. If we didn't understand judgment, your name ain't going to be in there. Right. Look at your name and give him a smile and say, is your name in the book? Your name in the book. Because right. 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 everybody who will stand before him, everybody's name ain't in the book. Right. There's going to be a sad thing. You on one side, your little Johnny on the other side. And he was saying, please let him in. And God was say, it's your fault. What? What? You didn't teach little Johnny just. That's it. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. At this time, I'm going to ask, if you desire prayer for anything, I'm going to ask that you come. It is this prayer team. I'm going to ask that you come to the altar. Thank you, God. Thank you. 